It's like uh, when you're talking about uh, ISKCON and, and, and doing the Hare Krishna uh, mantras and chanting when everybody's together. Actually, for no reason, you'll just start crying, you'll start tearing. Yeah. Emotions will come, you'll feel so joyful, so blissful, release will happen, healing will happen just from chanting because it holds so much power behind it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think uh, everybody who hasn't done it before, hasn't tried it before, should, should try. It's a, it's a very nice way to get into vibrations and, mm -hmm. and get connected with the vibrations of the universe. Namaste everyone and welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Consciousness. And uh, we have Master Shia Karshana today with us. Namaste, Namaste everybody. Master. And we have I'm creator team here, Miss Kaina, and Man, and <laughs> my name is Nishma, and in this episode we're going to be talking about um, spirituality, manifestation, law of attraction, but specifically today I would like to discuss on the topic of um, chanting, the mantras that we usually uh, practice during our meditation and um, even during yoga when we practice the chanting. So what is the significance of the chanting, the Om chanting, for those people who don't know, who've never experienced this before, how would you explain why we do the chanting? I think uh, there's so many interpretations of it, um, mm -hmm. and actually most interpretations are, are correct. It's just that put into a different context, it's used differently. So a lot of it has to do with the flow of our energy, has to do with our vibrational being, and when we switch when we do chanting, we change our vibrations in our body. And so Om Chant is very powerful. Um, some people also talk about the, and this is what you were mentioning yesterday, about the ah, uh, ooh, mm, about bringing the uh, sounds up. When we chant ah, uh, that ah uh, comes from lower, comes from this side. So the chakras it's awakening is from mm -hmm. down here. And when we go oh, it'll be from up here. Oh, it will no longer be from down here. You'll feel it when you do the mmm, mm, will only be here. So where it's awakening is very different. But if we don't do the ah, ooh, mm, if we just say om, if we do the om chant, actually, it's very simple. We repeat it. I don't know when you, you guys do it through um, our practice. A lot of the time after practice or before practice, when you do om chants, straight away, you'll feel suddenly it's gone all blissful, all peaceful. Yeah. Like, the silence is much louder. Mm -hmm. And so, um, this is the, the peaceful, the bliss vibrational frequency of the universe. So we say the universe has vib all vibrational frequencies. It has mm -hmm. chaos vibrational frequencies, every vibrational frequency is there. But when the peace and bliss is the Om chant. Mm -hmm. And so, the, when, when we do Om chanting, we tap into that most blissful state of the universe. And so that's why it feels very good. It's very soothing. It's very, it's healing. It's calming. Oh, so from what I've heard, it um, says um, that Om is the sound of the universe. Mm. So is that correct to say? Or is it just a vibration of the universe? So, so we, we, we can say, I, again, that's an interpretation saying it's the sound of the universe. The universe has a lot of sounds. Mm -hmm. The universe is full of all sounds, everything combined. So um, I, I think it's best to say that that is how we tap into the most blissful state of the universe. Yeah, uh, yeah that you mentioned, I do feel that during meditation, whenever we do Om chanting, um, like the vibration that you feel when you say, ah, like from here on your lower belly, it goes all the way to the top. And at that time, you just feel so blissful. If you don't do the chanting, it's hard. I find it harder to get to that blissful state. But after the chanting, especially when everybody does it together, mm -hmm. it's way more blissful. Mm -hmm. What do you guys feel about it? Well, the first time I ever actually did the Om chanting, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what's this cold shiver? Like, I always get, you know, mm -hmm. this goosebump when I first did it. And then uh, the more I did it, I was like, this can't be any coincidence. Like it just keeps happening. Like as soon as you go home, it's like, oh my gosh, my hair's like <laughs> you know, standing on my, my my arm. I'm just like, yes, it's 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 crazy how powerful it is because once once you start getting into that like vibrational frequency, 
with everyone, especially when you're doing it with everyone. And so it's like if you have a hundred people in a room, a thousand people in a room, the effect is very different. And also, when you're arming, um, I, 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 I don't know how how big a room practice uh, everyone's been practicing here. But when you do it in a nice, a good size room, maybe anywhere 20, 20 people upwards or something like that, you will feel when you first arm, actually there will be differences in everybody's how they're arming. Oh yeah. yeah. After a few arm chants, actually you start going into the same vibrational frequency as everybody else. That you feel that synchronicity, it's, it's, it's beautiful. That coherence is beautiful and it's very soothing. So usually when, uh, if, some, if I um, then somebody else um, then somebody else um, and they, they come in, somewhere in the middle of it, they will slowly shift towards what everyone is and everybody comes together. That is a very powerful vibration when everyone comes together. Why do you think that is? Like, is it because of like human habits of like being able to just match, like just for example, like maybe people think, oh, maybe I'm not doing it at the right pitch. That's why I'm doing it, you know, trying to match it with other people. But is it because of like a scientific I, I, principle I think, or is it? I think it's a, because it's a very small adjustment. The moment you make that adjustment, you get that sensation. It's a very beautiful, uh, with three, four people, it's, 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 it's tougher. When you have a big group, it's a very beautiful feeling and you just want to do it again and again and again and again. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of people as well. Um, you know, who does a lot of om chanting without any sort of like um, any reasoning behind it. Like, for example, they'll see, let me do om for 108 times okay. and I, I feel something magical will happen. Like, what's the significance behind why we do 108 ohms or like uh, 51 ohms or what's the significance behind that? Yeah, so 108 is um, something that was practiced by a yogi. A very famous yogi but I don't want to talk about these stories uh, with any religious reference or anything like that because then there's all the judgment will come in and everyone will say this and that and the other so it was a practice by a very divine spirit and because they practice one awaits so much with all these different powers and everything then it actually created even more significance around the one awaits it added power to it so that power always then existed in a lot of different religions, 108 is a very significant number. When we uh, chant, or even when we do sun salutation, or we do any practices in 108, actually, we are also receiving the powers from that divine energy. And so that's why the combination of 108 and the combination of one uh, Om chant, or the combination of even sun salutation, all of these coming together, becomes a much more powerful practice. And so that's why 108 uh, and that's why we have the mala beads as well the 108 mm -hmm. yeah. there's a there's a um i guess when people are saying chanting sometimes they get confused about you know mantras as well um what's the difference between mantras and chanting so man all mantras will have a so mantras chanting it, you can chant mantras so it's the same thing um but when we are talking about om chant that is usually getting into that vibrational frequency mm. actually with Om Chan, we can break it up. And a lot of the time in our practice, we do. With Ah, uh, where is it opening up is different. With Oh, where it's opening up is different. Where mm, Actually, even when we do the mm, that practice is a very powerful energy because you're tapping into something to do with the energies of humming bee. I don't know if uh, anybody here has um, uh, much... Uh, understanding or, or, or consciousness around bees. Mm. Did you know that if bees weren't in this world, we would not be alive? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's very auspicious energy, very powerful energy. And so, um, actually, in a, in some way, when we go into, um, let's say, the energy that governs um, uh, sleep. Mm how we enter into the energy that governs sleep and match that vibration is through humming bee meditation. So when we do mm, before bed, we can access a different power for sleep and then into dream. So then you've got, so you've got those sounds which get on those vibrational frequencies. Then you've got certain mantras. So when we've got certain mantras, it will have a meaning. So everything will, it depends what energy you are uh, receiving powers from. Because, uh, and, and, and sometimes people, when they hear this, 
uh, energies and what energies and what divine energies. People will always reference and think, oh, they're talking about some religion and, and, and this God, that God, the other. Okay. Let me put it this way. Gravity is an energy. And it's a science, right? Gravity is an energy. We're going to say, what? But you can't speak to gravity. Actually, you can connect with any energy. Every day you're connecting with gravity anyway, so whether you like it or not. Yeah. Gravity is an energy. Heat is an energy. Sun is an energy. Right? Wind is an energy because everything is energy. So you can't, water is an energy. So you can't say, wait there a second, they're talking about some divine. No, actually, we're talking about exactly everything that you understand is energy. And so when we say, when you say certain mantras will connect to certain energies because um, for two reasons. Number one, if you were to, let's say, for example, if you were, if you had, if you were to say an English mantra that, um, has something to do with uh, water, let's say. And you say, water, uh, I connect with water, water flows through me, or something like that, right? You connect with the water. You will be thinking of water, therefore you become the vibration of water. You'll be flowing like water. When you become, when you become that vibration, which is a part of you, because you, we are all water anyway, then obviously you connect with that energy. Then when you connect with that energy, attraction, what you receive, can be from that energy also. So, that is when you use, let's say, if uh, that's clear to say, okay, if you use an English mantra, you'll understand it, therefore you change. Now will come the question of, okay, well, but when you do so, some uh, Sanskrit mantra, for example, mm. is that you don't even understand what you're saying, so how do you connect with that energy? Because that energy is connected with that word. So whether, whether you, whether your mind connects to it or not, it doesn't actually matter. Because that energy is already connected to that, to that word. And so if that energy is connected to that word, there is a part of you that synchronizes and matches up anyway. So it's the same. That's why in, in meditation and in, in, in all these practices, we always say suspend thought. Don't think. Because if you think you, you're overthinking it. If you don't think, what's happening? Well, the only thing that is happening when you don't think is vibration and energy. Feeling. Right? And that feeling, everything will just connect and then powers and energies will be received. That's a very, very good answer, I have to say. Um, so, uh, kind of, um, for yourself, would you say that, you know, you practice um, chanting or mantras on like a, um, on a, you know, occasional basis or what's your thoughts on it? Um, just when we're doing the yoga. Yeah, um, that's it. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's good. It's it's like what you said. The moment the the voices matches each other or the the pitch matches each other is very satisfying. So always try to like singing. Harm harmonizing. Yeah, always try to get to that point. It's difficult, more difficult when it's just one person or two people. When I'm doing it by myself, I don't think I'm on the right pitch. But um, <laughs> Yeah, otherwise I, it's very I good. I think also sometimes it's not about thinking about the right pitch. Sometimes it's that the uh, it's it, chanting, especially like Om chanting, is very good for opening a throat chakra. Because it's, it's physical. We don't need to think. Sometimes people think, oh, all these chakra systems and all these has to be, we have to think of something else, like some energy, some colors and things like that. It's physical. Yeah, this is motivation. This is love. These are feelings. You see, this is speaking. A lot of people who are quiet, introverted, or, or feel they're not, they, they, a lot of the time they feel like speaking out, but they're not very good at speaking out. Usually it's throat chakra. So it's, it's, it's very practical. Uh, so when we do chanting like that, and if we were to practice it every single day, voice will open up. Everyone will get a voice. Yeah. So is there any like particular, um, I guess, practices that you would recommend for people who, you know, have issues with opening up their throat chakra? Is there like um, a, a practice that you would recommend? I think, I think Om Chant. Om Chant is fine. Uh, or you could split it into three, what we did before. So the Ah, uh, the O, oh, and the mm, And then we practice all three together. Ah, uh, oh, so if we open like that, but when we open it, we, we, we need to make, it's like singing. Mm -hmm. If we're singing, a lot of people, they're singing from, from here, from here, instead of singing from here. So when we open up, it can't be, it can't be, ah, that's from here, ah, 
when it, when you come from here, it's ah, so you push, you feel it from here. So I think keep practicing pushing it through from here, energy center, it comes up naturally, this part will open up. Yeah, that's a practice for me for sure, because whenever <laughs> I sing, I notice that I don't sing from the stomach up, it's only coming from up here. <laughs> so that's why uh, when it comes to the power level, yeah. that's where the struggle will yeah, be. That's Usually right. on, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Because tone, tone uh, same with Kaina also. Yeah. Tone is very on key, everything's perfect, so when like that is good. Um, when, mm -hmm. when powering, we'll be lacking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah, I wanted to, when we were, you were talking about m mantras, um, it reminded me of, actually I grew up, like um, I'm Hindu, so I pretty much grew up with knowing about all this um, mantras and chanting. We did it since I was young, but for some reason I never connected it to it as deeply as I did just about a year and a half ago when I got more into spirituality. And um, when we, there was time in ISKCON temple, uh, like Krishna consciousness, I was being a part of that. And we were all chanting the Maha Mantra, mm. like Hare Krishna Mantra. Mm. And I think that was the first time when we were all together. Um, it was a big crowd, mm. everyone together singing Maha Mantra mm. together. That was so blissful. Like I couldn't explain. And um, I was with my parents and there were a lot of people. They wanted to go home, but I just didn't want to leave. I was just in a blissful state. Mm. And that kind of made me wonder is so words hold so much power right mm -hmm. so those sanskrit words hold, hold so much power so is it that it's only those sp specific words or does every word we speak hold different power different vibration every word everything we speak holds power mm. so we're then, attracting but, but then, yeah so you're attracting but then uh, when uh, more power and attention and energy is applied to certain words then more power it holds so it builds so you Evolves. you mean that if you say anything like I remember last time you mentioned um, if you say anything with more intensity, mm. is it about how intense you are with your words and? You, you can't say that. So it's it there's there's always the two things that are going on. There's the word that holds power. Yeah. Then there's the intensity of what you put into mm. that word. So there's two things will always be in collaboration. Just like if you were to say a swear word, the swear word holds a lot of power. People hear it will be distracted immediately. It doesn't matter if you change the tone and you smile while saying it, it will still affect people, you see. So it's because the, the word already holds power. So two things, mm -hmm. our intensity of how we say it, obviously, obviously it matters. The word also holds power. Mm. Right. Yeah, I remember there was, um, uh, I don't exactly remember who did the experiment, but they did an experiment on the water and then they spoke in one, uh, one room, they had uh, water and they said like loving words mm -hmm. and the other room they said, like hateful words to the water and then it formed different crystals and the one where they said hateful words it was very like weird crystal um it looked very messy but the one where they said loving words um it created like really beautiful crystals mm. so dr emoto uh, dr emoto yes yes the water experiment mm. and that really was like wow eye <laughs> opening that oh my gosh our voice our sound what we say uh, holds so much power and mm. yeah. but but i think it's um yeah it's it, Mantras are powerful. I think sometimes when people think, oh, well, this is some other language or some other religion or something like that, I think people are already overthinking it. Everything holds power. It's like uh, when you're talking about uh, ISKCON and, and, and doing the Hare Krishna uh, mantras and chanting when everybody's together. Actually, for no reason, you'll just start crying, you'll start tearing. Yeah. Emotions will come, you'll feel so joyful, so blissful, release will happen, healing will happen just from chanting because it holds so much power behind it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think uh, everybody who hasn't done it before, hasn't tried it before, should, should try. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice way to get into vibrations and, mm -hmm. and get connected with the vibrations of the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on top of that, um, we, I experienced with all the team together when we did, in San Diego, when we were doing the whole dancing, mm -hmm. And then we went into meditation. Mm. So that's also another way of, you know, when your vibration is really high, you go all crazy and you're dancing and you're having fun. And then when you're in that level of vibration, mm. in that state, you go into um, meditation. Mm. And is that a practice that you recommend people to do yeah, to we, get so, into? So, this? so we usually do. I mean, even through yoga, the effect is, uh, the idea is similar. When we talk about go into gratitude, go into joy, jump up and down and do these things. 
and these jokes and, 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 and everything's funny and lighthearted and joy is there. These are high vibrational frequencies. But we always say that high vibrational frequencies can be chaos sometimes because your mind can be all over the place. So that's why from there, if we take that high vibrational frequency, then we calm the clutter in the mind using mm -hmm. meditation or breath work. Right. We are in high vibes while mind is most calm, which is the most perfect formula for manifestation. Amazing. So we should <laughs> practice that more often. More dancing. More dancing, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Master. Mm. And thank you, Kaina and Man, for your shares. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you guys enjoyed regarding this topic. And if you have been practicing any chanting or mantras, let us know what your practice is. It's always nice to know. And what other topics you would like us to talk about in the next episode, please do let us know in the comments below. And we can talk about those um, topics in the next episode. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification button that's on the side. That's a bell sign, by the way. And we will see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Namaste.